All right, boom, it's time we dive into the ultimate timeline. So I have a question for you lot. Do I play the security breach, which is like the last one they've released, or do I do it from the very beginning? Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, Cause obviously I did, I tried the first one before and I, I wasn't really the biggest fan of it. Just like checking through security cameras and that, where I heard security breach, you kind of get to like move around and explore and stuff like that. And that's more a bit of me, if that makes sense. Um, but let me know what you lot think about that. Uh, I'll post stuff for a couple of days and I'll look at the comments. Let me know what you lot think. But today we're gonna be checking out, we're gonna finish the my timeline. Maybe not this episode, maybe not this video, but we're gonna make a step process to finishing it. So without further ado, get your popcorn, get your snacks. It's either gonna be a 26 minute video or a half an hour video or an hour video where I just watch multiple of the timelines in one. We shall see. Anyway, without further ado, Let's get involved. Hello, internet. Welcome to Game Theory, and officially page seven of the FNAF timeline script. All right. Last time we covered the origins of Freddy's. We talked yes, about we William did. Afton's childhood dream project yep. of making a singing bear come to life, and the infuriating moment that his dream is copied by a rival restaurant franchise looking to steal away his success. But then the merger of together. the two franchises results in William meeting Henry, a yes. brilliant designer with a knack for robotics. Working together, they make Fred Bears flourish, spawning yes, popular Saturday this. morning cartoon shows, toy lines and spin-off restaurants under the Fazbear name. When last we left him, Afton was thriving. The world of robotics opening his eyes to new Man and was exciting making that ways money. of bringing characters to life. Bringing things to life, yeah, that was his core driving force, his passion. And it was this very passion that would mutate, twist, and morph from here on out in the story. Because with life, there is inevitably death something that Afton would become intimately familiar with. But before Afton acquaints himself with death, I want you to take some time to acquaint yourself with our newest channel. Okay, cool. Sorry, sorry. I was just to just give it that. Business right. was booming with two whole restaurant franchises running. Fred Bear's Family Diner and the yep. newly opened Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Together, William and Henry had been able to take the hybrid suit idea and make it into a reality. They called their new invention the Springlock Suit. And fittingly enough, it was symbolic of the partnership between these two men. A human suit as designed by William that could become a freestanding Henry yes, style that's robot. What you wanted, but because it was it? still new tech with kinks to work out, the rollout was limited, restricted only to the Fred Bear's family diner location. All of this meant that William was busier than ever. He didn't have time to be a full-time parent, so he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood, as well as the in his youngest son's you know? favorite toy, Psychic Friend Fred Bear. Whoa. I mean, plushy Fred Bear. That's but since weird. cameras just weren't enough to raise a kid, he also left childcare duties to his eldest son, Michael. There was just just one problem with that, Michael was far from the best babysitter. He tormented oh. his younger brother by jump scaring him with a foxy mask and constantly left him behind. William watched wow. all of it from his cameras. Kids would be kids. Tomorrow was another day after all. Wait, Except what? Michael's torment didn't stop. Bitter, Why would you angry stop yourself from doing that? Through Michael's mind. Why did he have to be the one to take care of this whining crybaby all the time? Probably. It just wasn't fair. But he's probably crying because you keep scaring him, Michael though. Does that not, did that fool not cross your mind? Did you think, wow, maybe if I didn't scare him, he wouldn't be crying all the time. Huh? Maybe just try that. You know what I mean? It was time you know that I mean? he got even with his brother by playing the ultimate prank. A even? prank that just so happened to be on this crying child's birthday. He and his friends would take his scared little brother and make him do the one thing that he was terrified of doing. Getting close to the animatronics. Oh, that that's why he got crushed, didn't it? such an embarrassment to him. His brother squirmed, screamed, kicked, and fought. But just as they were putting that small squirming he boy up to Fredbear's lips, the mouth snapped shut. Yeah, the sensitive oh spring locks inside God. the body had been triggered by the boy's movements and they'd immediately clamped down. The wriggling stopped. The boy went limp, but it was just a prank. Oh my God. The boy was God. taken to the hospital and was immediately given an IV. Flowers and pills filled the nightstand next to his hospital bed, but the damage was too severe. He couldn't recover. As he the died. younger brother's consciousness began to fade, he could hear Michael's last words, a small and flimsy apology. But his father, Williams, through the voice of the Fredbear plush, were a firm and committed promise to a dying son. You're broken. Whoa. I will put you back together. Whoa. This would not be the end. No matter what, Williams' He didn't son even go and see his son in the hospital? That's crazy. That's actually into. Whoa. Also, like, what? Again, it would just take time. 
Time that, right now, he just didn't have. His young son's heart flatlined as the boy faded into the inky unknown of the afterlife. In the aftermath of the tragedy, changes started happening around the restaurants. Kids right. were now required to wear security wristbands to prevent anyone from getting outside without parental permission. That Any makes kid sense. who approached the exit without permission would have to answer to the security puppet. A oh marionette on strings that could fly around on rails across the restaurant to stop kids in their tracks. It was William's idea, inspired by that Michael kind of sounds terrified. I can't lie. without his brother. In the wake of Fred Bear's spring lock failure, all the hybrid suits were getting retired, locked away at the nearby Freddy Fazbear location. It was yet another tough pill to swallow after all the hard work that he and Henry had put into them. William would eventually bury the boy's small body in a remote location out in the woods right alongside his drive into and out of work every day. The death of this little boy sent the family spiraling. His wife, crippled with grief, was so distraught that all she could do was sit and watch TV. But his son Michael was far worse. Complaining I mean... of seeing hallucinations of a golden bear standing outside of his window, the boy was so racked with guilt that he was convinced that he was being haunted by the ghost of his brother I mean, stuck you did kill him. <laughs> Let's be... his life. It makes Sense. Three toed feet digging into the wet earth. The words, it's me, ringing through Michael's ears. Oh, Some wow. nights, Michael would even go so far as to break out of his room to check the gravesite and ensure that his brother was still there. Oh, as for William wow. himself, he disappeared into his work and his drinks. Junior's, the local bar, wasn't far from his son's gravesite. He found himself going there more and more frequently, spending longer and longer amounts of time there. The bar Damn, gave so him he a, place a little to alcoholic. Think. To remember, to reflect and stew on how Henry had stolen his idea for an animal-themed restaurant. How they'd cut his character out of the cartoon when everyone else was there. How Henry had humiliated him by buying him out of bankruptcy. Jesus. And now, now there was his son. Henry had taken his son from I'm, the robotic part. I mean, I, I, I don't think it was Henry that took your son. I'm, if anything, it was your son that took your son. Do you get what I'm saying? And... Mo would you not think that most men would be happy to get to be taken out of bankruptcy and then then thrive it even if it was your idea and even if you know one little blimp of your animatronics didn't make it into the show or whatever but you have money cool you've lost your kid but that was your son's fault let's let's keep it a buck with you like your your son prayed a prank and it and the prank went tits up and um you, the guy that bankrupt you has made you millions. Call your families in disarray, but again, you're useful, not Henry. Part was the part that failed after all. William ordered one more I guess drink, this is a psychopathic. Many, the bar turned him out and told him oh, to go wow. home. Oh, wow. Really? But William didn't go home. Oh, angry, God. William raced back to the restaurant to give Henry a piece of his mind, only to find someone else waiting. Henry's daughter, Charlie, locked outside of the building, bullies laughing at her through the window. Fine, some other problem to fix. But then Afton got an idea. A beautifully awful idea. A beautifully this, this awful was idea. To get back at the man that had humiliated him all those years ago. Henry had what? killed his business, and now Henry's robotic he kills his suit daughter, doesn't he? Yeah. Son. It was time for William to do some killing of his own. No! Let Henry feel what it's like to have something you that love That is not away. the While way, bro. parties continued inside the walls of the pizzeria, William attacked Charlie in the back alley. And it felt good. He oh felt my... Free. The years of resentment and bitterness trapped in his heart finally released in a moment of pure unapologetic yeah, evil. This he ain't... would make Henry hurt like this he hurts. <laughs> oh my. And in that moment, William became a killer. He dropped Charlie's lifeless body and drove home, forced to confront his family problems later that night, appalled, but also a little excited. Huh? What he had just done. Charlie's death would remain on the books as a random act of violence. And though Henry had suspicions about William, there was no physical evidence, nothing that could link him back to the crime. In the weeks that followed, Fred Bear's family diner would close for good. Two high-profile deaths yeah, around literally. the restaurant with two grieving owners. And you know what's mad? It's the two owners' kid. Yeah, the two owners' kids are the ones that died as well. Not just the random kids that went into the restaurant. The two owners. That's such a short period of time. It was just too much bad press to handle. Besides, yeah. Freddy Fazbear's was still open, and it was the newer restaurant anyway. All the equipment from Fair the enough. diner, including the old yellow suits and security puppet, would get retired to that location and there they would sit for two uneventful years the rest of 1983 and 1984 were spent quietly grieving freddy fazbear's pizza and the new cast of characters oh, were a God. hit tragic memories of their yellow predecessors quickly faded afton kept a low profile and buried himself in work and research quickly reaching henry's level of engineering and even surpassing him and while henry 
very slowed down to grieve, Afton kept going. Even starting his own company, Afton Robotics, for all those pet projects that were a little bit too experimental for the regular operations of the pizzeria. The first of these experimental projects was a secret workshop under his house. A veritable bunker, which allowed him to work while still monitoring his kids via hidden security cameras. Right. One, nine, eight... Three, a passcode that served as a constant reminder of why the cameras were so important, why he was down there in the first place. This was all to fulfill the promise that he had made to his son, right? I will put you back, back together. together again. This yeah. was for him, all for him right? But cameras weren't enough. He needed to solve the runaway Michael problem. He had to keep him in the house. He couldn't have another one of his kids wind up dead inside of an animatronic I mean, suit. I'm not gonna, so I, why not run a little... Know I'm so surprised Michael got no punishment to this. Like, I, I'm so shocked that that Michael just didn't get... Do you get what I'm saying? Because it was him and his friends that put the you in, in the bear. I'm so shocked that nothing happened to Michael. Experiment on Michael. You see, all this work with Henry had gotten Afton to start learning more about life, robots, the human mind, and right. what a fallible machine we as humans were. Our reality is so easy to manipulate with a few sensory Jesus. Deceptions. deceptions like sound. With just a few sounds, he had discovered that he could alter a person's vision. He could transform blank, smooth, plastic robots into lumbering, twisted nightmares. Nightmares <laughs> yeah, far literally. scarier than he could create with actual materials. They would appear organic, rotting, putrid, terrifying. Oh my God. These would be his means of keeping his son Michael in the house where he belonged. Wow. Was it extreme? Maybe. But then again, this was the boy who... <laughs> was it extreme? Maybe. Nigga, of course that was extreme. Just, I don't know, beat him or something. That makes more sense than terrifying, okay? Giving him PTSD. Then again, I guess beat him could also give him PTSD, actually. I don't know. Mm. Okay, he fair killed play. his son. He would make him he sorry. Did. And so Michael would Fine, okay. not only yeah, dealing yeah, with yeah, the yeah, yeah, okay. of his own guilt, that makes sense. room, the pills, the flowers, the death of his brother, but also facing literal nightmares. Yeah, Illusions to be fair. By sound. Yeah, Michael you say, would yeah. never forget these either. Years later, as a security guard, he would still draw pictures of them inside of his logbook. But wow. all of these extra projects meant that his home life suffered even more. He was an absent father and a non-existent husband, leaving his wife cold and alone. Why Damn. Whoa! Inside your walls when there is music in my hall. Whoa! All I see is Wait, what do you mean by empty room? No more joy, an empty tomb. No, that's actually terrifying. And despite her repeated demands that, that he actually leave his terrifying. office and engage with the family, he refused time and time again, leaving her no choice but to leave. You Makes sense. My house. You call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. You need to see your son. The baby isn't mine. Well, how's the this? baby isn't mine? I'm keeping the diamond ring. And through it all, there was one lingering feeling. William wasn't done. He had gotten a taste of what it felt like to be unleashed. What it felt like what? to be free. To kill. Charlie Charlie's murder had unlocked yeah. something in him, and he wanted more. June 26th, 1985, putting on the golden bonnie suit, he lured children one by one to the back room of the pizzeria when no one was looking. At Jesus. first, he was cautious. He would lure them with promises of cake and cookies. He told them that their dog had died. He would ask for help with homework. Their dog had died. The first. You never truly forget your first. Oh! But where to hide the bodies? He couldn't sneak out. Someone oh would see him. Oh my god. He had to hide them in a place where they'd never be found and in where the they'd animatronics never leave in the it? building they had to be stuffed stuffed inside of the suits no one maintained those things anyway except for him and so Susie would go into chica fritz jeremy and gabriel would come next but it was easy it was too easy and with each little life he snuffed out his lies got bigger their house was burning they're just being kidnapped until the last they're one where all pretense was off he let himself get violent too violent i'll just wait for him after school throw a bag over his head hit him with a and drag him into the back of my car. The body oh my of Cassidy God. was far more bloody and broken than any of the others. He'd let himself go too far. That one, that one he shouldn't have killed. With no more active animatronics left, he shoved the body into the one suit that remained backstage. The long forgotten yellow Fred, Fred Bear. Bear. Now broken and discolored with age. Broken, like Cassidy was broken. Like his son was broken. Newspapers reported on this disappearance, naming the whole thing the missing children's incident. Police would even charge William with... Creative name. Very creative name. The crimes after finding security footage of the golden mascot suit luring kids to the back. But they couldn't convict him. They had no bodies and his face had been hidden behind the mascot suit the entire time. Yeah. What they had was circumstantial at best. And so he walked away a free man. But <sighs> Henry knew the truth. In these murders, he yeah, saw his daughter say. Charlie all over again. So he threw Afton out of the company and shuttered the doors to the old pizzeria. Which Henry would keep makes the franchise sense. quiet for two years. This would not happen again. This could not happen again. 
how could he protect the kids? Finally, By having security. he developed a solution. He would implement an even more extreme security system in the form of new animatronics. Toy no, you, no, no, no. You could have just got actual security guards to maybe protect the kids. Or make, you, you know, that, that probably... <laughs> that, <laughs> that probably could have worked as well. You didn't have to build robots. Inspired by the toys that they had been selling years ago. But these guys, these were special. They were wow. a new breed of robot with facial recognition abilities. Oh. Most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database. So they oh. can detect a predator a mile away. All the original animatronics, now withered with age, were moved to the new location. With a plan in Why? place, it was time to try once more. The year was 1987, and the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was making headlines in local newspapers. Headlines that just so happened to catch the attention of William Afton. Of Afton. course Freddy's they did. back? And without him? That was his idea. His character. Henry was, yet again, trying to cut him out of the no, picture. No, 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 Afton, you murdered kids, bro. Like, you, do you not see what, you, what you've done wrong here? I was like, this guy is the, oh my God. As long God. as these restaurants stayed open, William would always come back. God then he noticed damn. the phone number to apply at the bottom of the article. $100 a week to apply. $100 After a week? That's... Oh, that's not actually go good. That's maybe like 400 a month. That's not great. Right. Co-founder, he would go back in the one place that they would least suspect him. We'll do, a lowly where? day shift security guard. And there it was. Buried oh. in the back of parts and services. So he did have security guard. The old withered animatronics was the golden rabbit. With the yellow security badge still on his chest, he used his crank to pull open the spring locks. It was time for Bonnie to give an encore performance. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Uh, from what I understand, the Five more. Do you know what? I didn't understand. I don't understand why they brought the old animatronics with them into like the new store, the new location. Because me personally thinking, if I'm doing a whole new thing. I'm not bringing nothing that's that, especially when, when murder has been involved. Like, I'm not bringing nothing. And, and also, they have security cameras, right? So they know that the kids probably never, they never saw the kids left the room. Do you get what I'm saying? When, um, when the bear took them into the room, like, they must have seen that the, the kids never left, unless they didn't have security cameras in that room. But... Like, I'm, I, I don't know why they didn't throw them away. He didn't All know what old, felt better. Getting back into the suit. Maybe, maybe it's like a nostalgia thing, probably. Like, we spent our time. This is, what, this is where we started. So, obviously, we're going to... Okay, that makes sense. After two long years of waiting, or knowing how devastating this would be to Henry the next morning, he didn't even try to hide his crime this wow. time. Just meant more blood on Henry's hands. He'd failed to protect the kids again. The restaurant wow. had only been open for a few weeks, but William was sure that this would get it to close. Good. If he couldn't have Freddy's, no one would. Whenever a new pizzeria opened, he would be there there. But Damn. as he sat in his bunker, something else started to linger in William's mind. Whoa. He had seen something strange. The old withered animatronics, they had been wandering around the building, spurred on by the puppet. It was almost like those old robots were trying to save the kids. Save them? They couldn't, obviously, but still, how were they moving? moving. It was mm. almost like they had been given life somehow. Did he have something to do with that? Of the course following he did. Day, the news would report a security guard getting bitten by one of the animatronics during the day shift. Was that bite meant for for him? William's curiosity was stronger now than his bloodlust. He had to learn more, but how? There was no way he'd ever be able to get inside another Freddy's yeah. pizzeria. Heck, there was practically no way a Freddy's would ever open again. Yeah. He needed to create something new, something brand new. He needed to create his own, own pizzeria. pizzeria. Due to the massive success, and even more so the unfortunate closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, it was clear that the stage was set, no pun intended, for another contender in children's entertainment. That makes Circus sense. Babies That's just... Pizza World. This, Circus Babies. This would be the place where he could continue his work. No longer just murdering, experimenting. He Damn. needed more kids. And he needed them alive. And knowing that he couldn't show his face on the restaurant floor, he needed a way of remotely capturing his victims and preserving them for his work. With that goal in mind, he designed a new breed of animatronic. Their endoskeletons fluid and flexible. He equipped oh, them wow. with sound lures that could mimic voices. They could isolate children. They could incapacitate and control 
maintain them with zero direct input oh, from him. Oh, wow. It was brilliant. He was brilliant. Far beyond the simple That's bars and brilliant. wires of lie. Henry's designs. And the characters he chose for this were uniquely his. His new roster wasn't going to be tainted by Henry's disgusting barnyard bird. Instead, it was back <laughs> to his characters, his creations. Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy. As well as two uh, special ones. The who? first, Ballora, was an homage to the woman who left him. Now, she would never leave him again. The uh? second, the titular baby was designed with his baby in mind. Elizabeth, his youngest child. Oh. She would always be daddy's little girl. Oh, the one that listened bless. to him. The one that obeyed until the day that she didn't. Whoa! Why won't you let me play with her? She's so pretty and shiny. Didn't you make her just for me? What? The day before a circus baby's pizza world opened, she disobeyed. She didn't listen. Huh? Left alone with baby, she got too close. The animatronic ripped in half and swallowed her whole. Oh! A scared and confused child fading into eternal darkness. Damn, well, she died in there. found her, it was too late. She was gone. He immediately canceled the launch of circus babies under the guise of a gas leak. But wait, as he sat there at the foot of the stage, he noticed that something was different. The eye color of the robot had changed. Baby had been built with blue eyes, but now they were emerald green. Oh, color as wow. Was she Her green? soul in it. Could this all be connected to the free Oh, that is so that sick. He had to know more. His mourning turned to excitement. He had to return to where it all started. 1993. Pathetic. This that was the year. Was that was the year before Henry I was born. clearly tried to reopen one final time with those old original animatronics from so yeah. long ago. It did not happen, did it? damage to the brand had been permanent. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. Hadn't been washed in decades. But Jesus. even if they had, nothing could wash away the stink of murder that haunted these halls. Yeah. One night, then another, then another. William repeatedly snuck into the old, broken restaurant to lure the living animatronics to him, one by one dismantling them, robbing them of their endoskeletons. The metal had to be the secret. It had to contain the remnants of life itself. But he had to know for sure. Leaping out of a room that was invisible to the animatronics programming, he dragged the oversized robotic skeletons back to his underground workshop. Back to where Circus Baby watched on with glowing oh, curious God. eyes. Eyes that somehow felt alive. Not knowing what else to do, William melted the robotic parts down. Five animatronic endoskeletons reduced down to one silvery puddle of goo. Oh, he wow. transfer this living metal to his own creations? He had to try. He picked up a syringe and filled it with the molten metal and injected the goo into Funtime Freddy's twisted, wiry endoskeleton. And suddenly, the coils came to life. Like really? Snakes writhing in a pile what that's actually really cold, lifeless metal moved and jolted on its own he'd done it he had unlocked that's the actually secret broken to life itself except something was clearly wrong the movements were erratic they were violent angry <laughs> baby didn't act this way she had been calm collected this was clearly something else something mindless and frantic this is the kids that you killed the souls and then portioning them out he had created incomplete beasts oh he maybe actually to truly understand it May he oh needed yeah more of this remnant as he searched the old pizzeria one more time for any remaining scraps of metal, the ghosts attacked. His past oh. victims come to collect their due, all led by Cassidy. The five lined up and blocked the door, and Afton's mind reeled. The scientific implications of this were incredible. Ghosts, real ghosts that he could see all standing against him. But what could they do? What couldn't they do? He panicked as Cassidy approached. How do you stop something that's already dead? Maybe yeah. with the thing that resulted in their death in the first place. He would get into his suit like old times. He would regain his power over them just like the day that they died. He was the genius. He was the one in the suit. He was the one in charge. Oh my God. Maybe it was his frantic movements. Maybe it was the leaky abandoned restaurant. Maybe it was just fate coming to collect its due. He didn't know. The only thing he did know was that his brain was suddenly filled with searing white hot pain as hundreds of metallic pins and gears stabbed into his Jesus. body from all sides. All he could do was collapse, blood slowly oozing out of the suit and pooling onto the floor around him. It couldn't end like this. It wouldn't end like this. His work was unfinished. Unable to move, his only option was to survive, to live, to keep living. It took days lying in his own blood, but eventually someone found him. A security guard making a normal report. When he saw the animatronics torn apart in the middle of the party room floor, it caused him to file an immediate report of a break-in. An owner would have to come in and claim the damage. And who else would it be other than Henry? Henry. Hope jumped in Afton's heart. Henry would see him. They were partners after all. He would be nah, the one to help save him, to get nah. him out of this suit, to relieve him from this tremendous nah, pain. There's Henry no way Henry's entered gonna do the that. secret room. His eyes fell on Afton sitting there in the pool of red, and Henry, saying nothing, turned and ha! Of course you, you killed his duo! All employees that due to budget restrictions, the previously mentioned safe rooms are being sealed at most locations. 
including this one. Nothing is being taken out beforehand, so if you left anything inside, then it's your own fault. Management also requests that this room not be mentioned to family, friends, or insurance representative. And so insurance. there Afton would sit, hanging out good, for 30 good, years, good. trapped behind the walls with an iron will that refused to die. End Jesus. of this part. I say this part because Jesus. it's not officially the end of the Afton era just yet, but this just felt like a really solid stopping point, and the episode has gone on forever. Okay, so most of this is things that we already knew. Stuff that's been established yeah, and yeah, reestablished yeah. time and time again by the games. That said, I forgot there about are the child two being things that I absolutely have child. to address. The first the duo, and biggest is the placement of sister location. Location, or more specifically, Elizabeth's death. To me, evidence yeah, in game Elizabeth. seems to suggest that it was meant to come before the crying child's death in 1983. The biggest clue to this is that the crying child saw something. Remember what you saw is the phrase that's repeated over and over again by psychic friend Fred oh. Bear, aka William Afton, speaking through a walkie-talkie in the Fred Bear plushie's stomach. But what did he see? Yeah. Well, I think we can tell based on how the nightmare animatronics are visualized. They have mouths in their stomachs, just like baby ripping in half at the ways to swallow a kid. There's right. also the empty girl's room, one presumably left behind by a dead sister. And lastly, it explains why he's scared and more specifically why Afton wants him scared. He needs his kids to stay away from the animatronics. He doesn't want them getting too close because the last time one of his kids got too close to a robot, his daughter he died. died. Yeah. That's then why he sets up the nightmares, to scare both Mike and the crying child away from the animatronics from that point forward. That's why books like the character encyclopedia outright suggest that we play as the crying child in FNAF 4. Right. That's why he has a nanny cam following the crying child everywhere, so he can keep tabs on his kids when they're out of his sight. He can't let another Elizabeth situation happen. Right. The death of Elizabeth also gives William Afton extra motivation for killing. He's a grieving father. His daughter was taken away from him, so Charlie should die as that well. He's lashing that. out at the world after losing his kids. And again, we know that at least one of his children had to have died prior to Charlie's yeah. death based on the mound of dirt that we see in Midnight Motorist. It also allows certain Circus babies to open and close earlier in the timeline, which is how you wind up with Funtime Foxy appearing as Mangle in the FNAF 2 location. Right. Basically, Elizabeth dying first has everything it needs to fit, except for the most important thing, the murder weapon. Why would Afton be building an animatronic with a giant claw in its stomach so early in the timeline? At this yeah. point, he just has no motive. It just doesn't make sense prior to <sighs> 1983. At this point in the story, he hasn't killed anyone, and we know for a fact that the missing children's incident is 1985. So Elizabeth Elizabeth's death coming before any of those events just doesn't work. Hence why I placed it where I did in the narrative timeline. Afton's death here is also a bit tricky. We know that he returned to the FNAF 1 location death. to break down the original animatronics in order to harvest their remnant. We know that he melts down five things to become one thing. Candy right. Cadet makes that very clear. So the five things are the five endoskeletons from the various animatronics. That would be totally fine if it weren't for one huge problem. Whoa. On his fifth visit to the pizzeria, Afton gets spring locked. So either the five becoming one starts in 1993, but then finishes 30 years later when he re-emerges from the wall to add the last endoskeleton to his pile, or he's had himself some reason to return to the original location after harvesting all the stuff that he can. It's not ideal, but it's the one angle that makes the most sense. And with that, this next chapter comes to a close, thereby leaving us with five more games to cover and another 40 plus years of Fazbear history to recap. Mm, to put it that way, something tells me that this might balloon into four parts. Ugh, we'll see. Anyway, until uh, he then, wasn't wrong. I, I think it was four parts actually i think it is well anyway do you know like i said we was we was gonna do one but i kind of got too in i'm too invested in this now so we're probably gonna we're probably gonna watch this one now hello as well. internet welcome to game theory and page 20 of our final fnaf timeline all right Super ridiculous last time we covered william afton's rise as a serial killer how we the did? loss of his young son in 1983 caused him to make one fateful promise that would ultimately serve as his driving force for decades i will put you back together fueled by grief and obsession afton would lose himself in work and drinks one night in a fit of rage he lashes out against henry's young daughter Charlie, yeah. his first murder. This moment becomes the first domino to fall in a long sequence of events that ultimately destroys William's life and the lives of those around him. That one murder killing. gives Afton a taste for blood. He literally. In deaths of ten more children across two different pizzerias. Those children go on to possess animatronics, giving Afton his first exposure to Remnant and the potential solution for bringing his son back to life. The need to learn more about this miraculous power leads him to produce the Funtime animatronics, as well as their capture devices. Robots designed to bring kids to him for experimentation and collection of more remnant. Except there was one 
thing that he didn't account for, his daughter's curiosity. He made the robots too appealing, and it would cost him Elizabeth's life. Yeah. Now with two children to put back together, Afton was more desperate and crazed than ever, returning to defunct pizzerias to steal the possessed metal still living inside their walls. What he didn't account for, though, were the ghosts, forcing him to pay for the I mean, who would, ghosts. right? When who... last we left him, William was <laughs> who would? bleeding to death behind a secret wall. Gone, but certainly not forgotten, as we're about to see in today's video. Today, we're finishing up chapter two of our story, wrapping up the Afton era. Over the next six pages, we switch our focus to the other main character of the franchise, Mike, a young boy dealing with the fallout of a stupid childhood decision with tragic consequences. A young man whose life is best described as collateral damage. Damn. The radius of William's whirlwind of destruction. Now, before we begin, let me just rip off the band-aid now. We won't be finishing the timeline today. I, I know. Yeah, I'm we know. Sorry, we I know. wanted to, but covering FNAF VR, AR, and Security Breach wound up taking VR an would be crazy. Script. And I've already made you wait long enough for this part, so I just had to make the executive call to break this one up into two. Don't worry, that part is already written. It is already recorded. It is just in the process of being edited. It is a hefty right. episode. So mark it on your calendar. That one's actually going to be going live on March 25th. It's also coming complete with a live talk back where we go back over everything from the past couple episodes, as well as having ourselves some very special guests. So overall, that one should be a lot of fun. Fair warning, though, the conclusions we've reached that solve security breach, whew, they are controversial. I, I feel good about them. Like, I think that we've locked in on a lot of the answers here, but, uh, whoa, they are going to raise a lot of discussion. Let's okay. just say that you're either going to love that episode or hate it. I don't really think there's going to be much in between on that one. Anyway, without any further ado, let's cover a chunk of the timeline that's a lot less controversial. Let's meet Mike. All right. William still wasn't back. Weird. Michael knew his father sometimes traveled for work, disappearing for days on end, but usually there was some sort of notice, a phone call, a post-it, something. It's not I'll like be back, Michael and know. his father were close, not far too. from it, but as a household of two suffering men coping with years of tragedy and loss, there was at least some element of communication between the two of them. They were united by a name and a shared pain. This time, though, things felt different. William had left nothing. His absence was longer. There were no check-ins, no updates. I was going for five years. Something had happened. If there was one thing Michael knew about his father, it was that he had contingencies, safety checks, backup plans. His father was a careful and guarded man. Right. Held his cards close to his chest and as such, William had prepared him in the event that something like this ever happened. Normally, his father kept his home office locked, but in the event of an unexpected, prolonged absence, Michael had been instructed to enter his father's oh. office and look behind an empty set of shelves mounted in the corner of the room. Okay. Rolling his eyes, Michael entered the office. Never fully understood how William was able to spend so many hours of his days locked up in here. There was just nothing to do. Most of this place was empty. He dragged himself over to the shelf in the corner, okay. expecting to find an emergency contact list, a Whoa. family safety deposit box. But what he actually found there was completely unexpected. What was Father, it? Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. What? The shelf swung open and revealed a giant industrial elevator, one that led straight down oh, into an damn. bunker. But, but that was impossible. Bro, Hidden inside did his all... childhood home was a secret entrance to an enormous underground science <laughs> That's layer. actually it, crazy. It didn't make any sense. Seriously, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> and yet here it was, mapped directly underneath damn, the floor plan huge. of the house that he'd grown up in, lost his brother in, been tortured in. Michael thought that he'd known his father, a prideful, sad, angry man with petty everyday problems, but clearly he'd been living with a stranger this entire time. Apparently. secrets. But Certainly he is all those things. So. being locked inside of his office made sense. He'd been here the yeah. entire time. Where was here, though? Was this Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals? The Circus Baby restaurant always did seem to be a deeply personal project for Father. A failure of his that cut unusually deep, especially after that first location had to be closed prematurely due to the gas leaks. Right. After that day, Father really did seem to change, to lose himself even more in his work. Clearly, the entrance he had found was some sort of secret back way into the facility, one that required crawling through vents to navigate. His father had been working here, but in secret. Why? And that's when he found her. At the end of the facility, Circus Baby. Oh, his damn. Joy. Except something was different about her. She wasn't like the others. The way she talked, the stories she told. This wasn't just a robot. No. She was alive somehow. And not only was she alive, she also felt familiar. Your fucking There's sister. There's something bad inside of me. I'm broken. I can't be fixed. Will you help me? Is this 
His sister? Yeah. His baby girl? But how? Why? What was this place? He dug around some old files and found blueprints outlining the features of these animatronics. Storage right. containers, voice mimicking, parental tracking. And was that a child in Freddy's stomach? Was yep. his father collecting and experimenting on kids? Yeah. all the rumors that he'd heard throughout his past actually true? Yeah. That the animatronics came to life at night? That there were murders done in all the pizzerias? That his father had somehow been the prime suspect in all of it? Suddenly, yes. Michael's mind flashed back to his persistent nightmares throughout his childhood. Had he been experimented on too? Tears oh. stung in his eyes as anger Fear and confusion filled his body. His father's secrets were pouring out. That's William wasn't ins. just a lame, overworked father. He was a monster. Toy much. Life itself. Suddenly, everything clicked. He frantically looked around the room, blinking human heads on poles, staring back at him. Green oh. eyes, his sister. Blue eyes, his brother. Closed eyes, his mom. Oh. All just staring expectantly. These were meant to be human. William was working down here trying to make believable humans, literally rebuilding the family that they had both lost. The small little girl robots with their British accents roaming the hallways with of this underground British facility accents, suddenly though. took on a whole new context. Oh, no, nah, but not. Nah. Were those meant to be his sister? A replacement for her? A clone? Was William building clones of his sister? They seemed to know him, after all, to react to his presence. They were older. Oh! They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. He always did have a bit of a resemblance to his father. Michael's mind reeled as the reality of his world crumbled to dust. No, no, he had to get them out of there. If this really huh. was his sister, heck, if any of these things were human, so Souls, whatever remnant of the humans that they once were, they needed to be rescued. Wow. They always but put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide. Why would you want to take Led the by the voice of Circus Baby, he marched through the now empty halls of the Funtime Auditorium. He would lead them. He would protect them. And finally, he would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years. Oh! You are in the scooping room now. Huh? The scooper only hurts for a moment. Scooper? That violent extraction arm? Michael had seen that one in the pile of blueprints. Something about heat rendering the magical silver metal inside useless. In reality, prior to getting himself spring-locked and put behind the wall, William's methods had become increasingly sophisticated. With a mechanized arm that could infuse new bodies with the soul, William could finally give and take away life. The only thing he needed were the bodies. But William wasn't the only one looking for bodies, as Michael was about to learn. But if we looked like you, then we could hide. If we looked like you, then we would have somewhere to go. Oh. Michael was going to be the hero to help these animatronics, all right. He was going to help the haunted tubes and wires of these animatronics escape. Just not in the way that he anticipated. Damn. His sister had lied to him. Another game of pretend. The scooper plowed forward, digging its extraction oh arm into his body. Oh my god. He heard his bones ripping through his flesh. Michael Black. Of course. Something is wrong with me. I should be dead, but I'm not. What the fuck? For the next several months, Michael's life was not his own. He was forced to comply with the tangle of wires and spirits that lived inside of him. His body felt like an overfilled balloon begging to burst as day by day, week by week, his flesh began to sag and discolor. He was a uh. walking, talking, rotting corpse, alive, but wishing he wasn't. He was a puppet, a walking shell. And while Jesus. he did his best to conceal his fate, there was only so much a man filled with robot spaghetti could do. The entity in his innards would eventually Jeez. Jesus. But by that point, the damage had been done. His decaying flesh stank, turning him into a literal purple guy. But still, even with no bones, even with rotting purple flesh and begging to die, Michael continued to live. That silvery metal remnant injected by the scooper meant that he couldn't die. His anger what? also refused to die. What he had seen down there in his sister's location had rocked him to his core. His father had killed and captured dozens. His experiments had killed his sister and then tortured him throughout all his childhood. He you was actively brother. trying to build human replicants. He didn't know where his father was, but Michael knew that he was out there somewhere. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. 
Michael had to correct for the sins of his father. Jesus. He had to make things right. Michael would burn Fazbear Entertainment to the ground. I mean, what else could you do when your skin was permanently purple? Yeah, Michael's yeah. strategy was like get an to apply for night security guard positions at the old defunct pizzeria locations. That way, no one ever had to see him or smell him uh, during the shift. And all these old shuttered locations did need guards. Teenage vandals and squatters were always looking to get inside these abandoned buildings, and yet no one ever really wanted to work an overnight graveyard shift I mean, unless they were practically out of options. Literally, turn, I don't blame you. One by one, he would take on the job of security guard, changing his name each time to ensure that no one was able to follow his paper trail. Once inside, he could tamper with the animatronics and figure out how they worked, writing about his experiences in his security logbook. Well, there, he would listen to the old tapes where upper management awkwardly welcomed new recruits to their summer jobs, right. even though he was working there nowhere near the summer months. He heard the gory details of his father's franchise from the outsiders looking in, confused and afraid about what was happening in the walls around them. Sometimes, he would see his brother in the form of the Golden Freddy suit, its oh name appearing God. on the walls around him. Except now, there was something else there. He was no longer alone. Another angrier presence was also in the suit, as if two spirits were forced to share yeah, the same body. Yeah. The Golden Freddy would attack him now. It was aggressive. Its vengeance wanted to lash out at anyone with the Afton name, anyone who wore a security guard outfit. Over time, Mike worked his way through the old restaurants, the original pizzeria, the bigger, better Freddy Fazbear's. He spent weeks there looking for clues as to his father's whereabouts. And each time at the end of his week shift, he would then set the location on fire. Oh, wow. can't survive high temperatures after all. So burning away whatever spirit-laden animatronics that still existed inside seemed like a winning strategy. Yeah. All this revisiting of his past, though, was causing the nightmares to begin again. Hallucinations oh, no. that brought him back to his childhood. The guilt around killing his brother. His dreams were oddly mixed with the shrill phone calls of the security guards, but it would all be worth it in the end. The goal was, was to eventually, eventually stumble across the one location, the one job that would finally reunite him with his father. Little did Mike know that that day would come sooner than he expected. Uh. 2023, an advertisement came across Mike's TV. Fazbear Frights, a new horror Fazbear attraction Frights? inspired by the awful crimes that occurred around Freddy Fazbear's pizza so many years they ago. They made an it attraction out of that. That's crazy. Crazy. Make a quick buck off the yeah, that's of insane. His own family. This wasn't a joke or entertainment. Regardless, he had to be a part of it. If this team was combing through his family's history, they might stumble across something that could be useful. And if his father True. was truly still alive as he suspected, there would be no way that he wouldn't show up here. Maybe True. Finally, finally, this could be the final chapter in his family's marathon of tragedy. Mike applied for the job and was immediately handed the keys. Years of doing this had taught him that security guards rarely receive thorough security checks. They also liked how creepy Mike looked. They thought it was a costume. On theme for the job. <laughs> hey, hey, glad you came back for another night. I promise it'll be a lot more interesting this time. For weeks, there was nothing. But just as Mike considered giving up, he received the call that he'd been waiting for Whoa. for years. What was the call? You're not going to believe this. We found one. A real one. Could this finally be him? Sure enough. There he was. William inside oh, his iconic golden damn. suit. Only now that looks terrifying. And decaying with age. And there they were. A small family of broken men finally reunited. It's been a long time, Dad. Mike had always struggled with the phantoms of his past haunting him, but now all the animatronics he'd encountered over the past months hopping from pizzeria to pizzeria suddenly sprang to life. Their burned faces oh, haunting him Jesus. tried to keep track of his father on the cameras. It would seem that William's mere presence had put the spirits on high alert. Ultimately, they were harmless, more annoying than anything else, but there was one that felt different from the others, one that was more than just a mere phantom, the security puppet. If he looked at the cameras oh. at just the right moment, he could see it floating there through the hall. He could even see its reflection in the water pooled on the ground. It would seem like he wasn't the only one there on a mission. While he was dealing with Springtrap, Michael assumed that this one was likely dealing with the spirits of this place, finally setting them to rest. Hopefully this means a happier day for all of us, Mike thought to himself. And in that moment, he felt the air around him release, like pressure being let out of a bottle. The building sighed, as if five spirits had finally been allowed to move on. He oh. had the sense that his brother was a part of them. He rigged the wiring inside the building to misfire, and the dry, desiccated walls erupted in flames. It is finished. Except it was not. <laughs> Somehow, through sheer force of will, Afton remained. He had survived. And oh Mike my to find a God. new way of finishing off his father. Luckily, the solution would present itself later that year. Not from Mike, but from another victim that had been left in his father's wake. Hey. We're talking about becoming a Fazbear Entertainment franchisee. Restaurant ownership and management. Something almost anyone can do with a limited degree of success. You are now the face of the newly rebranded Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Fazbear Entertainment is a 
brand had been closed for years. William had been stuck in a suit in a wall. The only person who legally could bring the franchise back was Henry. Henry. But he'd largely pulled out of the franchise around the time of his father's disappearance. Makes sense. Something was up. Surely this had to be some kind of a trick, right? Mike, doing what he did best, applied for a franchise and immediately got the job. Right. It was just one thing out of the ordinary. Paragraph four. If you are playing this tape, that means that not only have you been checking outside at the end of every shift, as you were instructed to do, but also that you have found something that meets the criteria of your special obligations under paragraph what 4. What does paragraph no 4 say? No employment contract he'd ever signed required him to keep special lookout for independently moving animatronics outside oh, the restaurant. Now he knew outside the restaurant, you know. Henry was luring them all back. Rather than trying to go to them, like Mike had done for years, Henry was doing the opposite. Get he was him putting to come them to. all under the same roof. Yeah. He was finishing them off for good. Mike knew this wasn't meant to be a restaurant. It was meant to be a prison, a containment vessel, a locked box meant to trap them all in so they could finally end the madness. It took a few nights, but eventually everyone was there. His father, the puppet, the robot spaghetti that had once violated his body, and his sister, now hopelessly devoted to serve the man that had once gotten her killed. Wow. He had been instructed to seal the doors and leave, but while he locked everything down, he didn't move on. If this was truly meant to be the end, if the remnant needed to be washed away, he needed to be a part of that. This oh, story. wow. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And with that, Damn. Afton Legacy died with all of them trapped inside of a literal box. As the flames danced around the office, Mike, for the first time in decades, was happy. But William wasn't gone yet. Although oh, the darkest God. pit of hell was open and waiting for him, something or someone wouldn't allow him to move on. Instead, he found himself locked in moments from his past. The pizzeria, his son's room, his underground bunker. It was as if his brain's neurons were all firing at once, overloaded, mixing and matching all his biggest fears, regrets, failures. What was this place? How how did he get here? He called out into the silence. What the? Then they started coming. Without warning, animatronics, both new and old, began to jump out at him, bite what him, the? rip him limb from limb. The pain was immeasurable. Make it stop. Make it stop. William, for the first time, longed for death, an end to this torture. Just as it felt like he couldn't take it anymore, everything was quiet again. It was as if the world had been reset. There was a brief moment of quiet, and then the onslaught began again. Dozens Jesus. of faces from his past all focused on him. A waking nightmare that he couldn't escape from. More pain. More ripping. It was his own personal hell, but why? Why couldn't he just die? And then he saw them, a group of characters he never thought he'd see again. Those janky, stolen characters that had started everything. The mediocre melodies. Oh. And it all started to go wrong once they showed up. Once Henry had made them. But mixed in with their obnoxious southern drawls, William heard something <laughs> else. It was barely a whisper, but he could just make out the words. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. D I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. Jesus. That voice. He knew that voice. Where's it where? from? Greetings from the fire. Back from the one you should not have killed. Oh, Cassidy. William thought back. He'd done a lot of awful things, but there was always the one that stood out. The one Not he was Charlie, most fighting with. Act of revenge. No. Not Susie, his first true murder, no. Instead, it was the one that he had lost control with. The yeah. one that he had broken beyond repair for no good reason other than because he could. The one that he'd stuffed inside the golden Is it that his partner used to wear. Cassidy. They were yes. Back, now they were trying to punish him, to make him suffer like he'd made them suffer. It was almost like William and Cassidy's souls had been locked together, fused by a collective rage and spite, each refusing to move on. But while Cassidy was so focused on taking revenge, they actually did the one thing that would be the downfall for so many others. Whoa. They kept William alive. Even though fire should have destroyed the remnant that was coursing through his being, Cassidy kept William breathing. How? The way How? His escape. William's will was so strong, his soul so powerful that he managed to put a part of himself inside the circuitry that housed the springlock suit. And there, his consciousness lay inside a single circuit board waiting. Waiting for Jesus. someone to find him and set him free. A person that no one would suspect.
Okay, so a bit of a shorter chunk, but an important one as we shift perspectives Damn. not to tell this side of the story. And with FNAF VR, AR, and Security Breach having so much to explain, I didn't want to rush through things by trying to cram it all in here. Don't worry, I know you've all been patient. The final video is happening on March 25th. That is locked, it is getting ready to go. Trust me, I want this thing to be over and done with as much as you. I am not just stretching it out for the views. But before we wrap up for the day, I did want to talk about the big Orville elephant in the room, Mike's quest for revenge. You right. might have noticed that I was vague about the dates, and there's a good reason for that. I don't know them. There is no good fair way enough, for me to make fair it enough, fair enough, Here's fair enough. what I do know. We know with a high amount of certainty that Michael Afton is the character that we play as up until Ultimate Custom Night. Mike Schmidt and Fritz Smith, the security guards for FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 respectively, get fired for, quote, tampering with the animatronics and odor. So weird connection between the two of them, right? But now, right. we have the phantom animatronics that are haunting us in FNAF 3. They use models from both FNAF 1 and FNAF 2. Meaning, whoever is sitting in that security guard chair, Fazbear Frights, they have to have seen both locations and their animatronics. And that's not all. Their designs are burnt. It's a weird detail in the game, and it's something that the character encyclopedia repeatedly calls attention to. The burned texture for these phantom animatronics. Why is that so unusual, though? Fazbear Frights is the first time in the franchise that we hear about anything burning down. From right. that point on in the story, it's like the characters turn pyro and are suddenly setting fires left and right. But for the first three games, nothing ever catches fire. The animatronics <laughs> are just moved or repurposed in some way. So when did they burn? And why would our security guards see them as being burned? Someone has to have been going location to location, setting these places on fire, Mike. purging the Michael. sins of the past. We know we're definitely playing as Mike and sister location in FNAF 6 based on the in-game dialogue. And in FNAF 4, there's an Easter egg where we can hear the phone call from night one of FNAF 1, meaning that whoever's in that bedroom has heard the recording as a security guard. We also know that Mike has seen the nightmare animatronics based on his drawings in the security logbook. So overall, there is solid evidence that connects all of FNAF's 1 through 6. You'll also notice how the character encyclopedia doesn't have a page for Mike Afton. This thing has a page for Chocolate Bunny Bonnie, but not Michael. Some tells me they don't want us to confirm how many games he's been in, because that would confirm too much of the theory. In right. short, this gives us an incredibly compelling and complete narrative. Mike as our protagonist, and William his father as our antagonist. Mike accidentally kills his brother in Fredbear's mouth, which yeah. begins our story and sets William down his pathway of destruction. Mike is then haunted by the guilt of his past and is looking to make things right across the rest Makes of the game. Sense. In Sister Location, he learns what his father's been up to and realizes what he has to do to correct it. Of after course. failing to finish the job in FNAF 3, he ultimately helps Henry end it all in FNAF 6. It is great. It is a clean narrative. There is just one problem, timing. Mike's well, quest you... can't really start until he's been down to sister location, seen baby, and gotten himself scooped. That's when he finds out about Afton's secret life. It's also Ye when he's gonna start to smell, cause you know, he's a walking, talking, rotting corpse. And yeah. we know that he's not going down into the bunker until the Funtime animatronics have been made, Freddy's has been closed, and Afton is out of the picture. That all should be happening post-1993 after William is sealed behind a wall. But that then presents us with a few problems. Afton has already dismantled the original animatronics as we see in the FNAF 3 minigames. How are those things getting burned if they're already deconstructed? Oh yeah, more, true. We see FNAF 2 paychecks with the date 1987. That is way earlier than I think it can be. To be fair, Fritz Smith's pink slip on night 7 doesn't have a date, but it's a bit weird to say that the first few nights are in 1987 and then employee number 3 is hired on years after the restaurant closes. Anyway, right. I just wanted to call that out because I don't have a solid answer for it and I'd love to see your comments down below. And with that, my friends, this chapter comes to a close. We'll see you on March 25th for the grand finale as we cover the final three games in the franchise and the controversial answers we think solves what those games were trying to tell us. Until then, my Faz heads, remember, even though Afton kind of succeeded in being brought back to life, gotta admit, he's still looking a little bit on the dry, dehydrated side. I suppose I mean, three fires <laughs> and being dead for yeah, a decade was, will tend to do that to I was you. gonna say. Unfortunately, thanks to today's sponsor, Arrow. Oh, right, okay. I was gonna say, where's he going with this one. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. This story is fire. Like this story is 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 fascinating. I'm not gonna like. It's so like, even the fact that you still don't. I wish there's a FNAF movie coming out, right? I think I saw that there was a trailer that dropped a couple of weeks ago. Maybe I should check out the trailer if you guys want me to. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, the next, the final one will be out very soon. It is the longest one. It will be out. It will be out in a couple of days. I promise. And then we're going to jump on the games. So let me know what games you want me to start first. If, if it's one, fine. If it's two, fine. If it's breach, sure. Um, and I'll catch you dons in a bit. Peace.